remember syrup sandwiches and grandma You know, I was gonna say, let me try and sum up my thoughts as quickly as possible, but to be honest, that's not gonna happen, so I'll just... yeah. This new album from Kendrick Lamar is no less fascinating to dig into than his previous efforts, like Section 80 or Good Kid Mad City, even To Pimp a Butterfly, which was Kendrick's most thematically rich and politically charged album to date. This new album offers some of Kendrick's most commercial sounding material yet, but it doesn't mean he's compromised his authenticity as an artist or just his artistry in general. It just means he's probably embracing more of a pop rap style. And it seems on many tracks that he's doing it satirically, like on Humble, or DNA, or some of the lyrics on Element, or maybe the singy, rappy, auto-tuned style of music that's covered on God. Kendrick's made plenty of statements and criticisms about hip-hop in the past, especially if you look at some of the tracks on To Pimp a Butterfly, which kind of go into how the industry is manipulating artists, and especially black artists, to kind of boxing them into a certain stereotype. And many times on Damn, he chooses to critique the superficial by almost parodying it. And thankfully, in plenty of cases, more than not, uh, the tracks are still musically pleasing anyways. They're bangers. Although sometimes there are moments where, you know, the embrace of certain pop rap characteristics like On God with the auto-tuned, singy, rappy, bright, synthy kind of sound on this track. Even though the sound is obviously quite satirically done, it's just that parodying the style by directly imitating it can result in the parody being just as unlikable as the material it's mocking. Or maybe it's just unlikable for me. I mean, I'm sure a lot of other people might enjoy this track because maybe they dig the sound, but but for me, I've just never been a fan of this auto-tuned like loads of trap percussion. The more I listen to this album, however, the more I realized the little details about each of the tracks that I could really latch onto. And thus, there was more appeal that I could find in the tracks, and this led to me just enjoying the vast majority of them. I can remember my face just going cold when I heard the gunshot on the chilling opening track, Blood. There's this moment on DNA where you hear this audio clip sampled from some sort of um, news report where the presenter's kind of making this bold claim that hip-hop has caused more damage to African Americans in recent years than actual racism. And Kendrick is kind of rapping over the top of this. This is why I say that hip-hop has done more damage to young Americans than racism in recent years. I just thought that was an amazing production choice because it's kind of like Kendrick is verbally fighting against the news clip, kind of taking a stance against what it's saying. I, I like the kind of reversed audio that's kind of sampled on the track feel. And there's also a similar kind of sound to the instrumental on Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the piano all throughout Element, that was very moody, quite dark, quite unsettling. And uh, I love the introspective vibe on Pride, which was enhanced by the guitar strums. Actually had a chord progression that kind of reminded me a lot of Suvlaki Space Station by the band Slow Dive. Dunno, just <laughs> found the resemblance between the two songs to be quite profound. Um, but I love the song Pride, it's probably... I mean, I might even say it's my favourite on here, but that's definitely subject to change. I just love the I just love the track, especially the hook. It might sound a little dreary, but you know, in this case that kind of really works for the track. Triple X had a great moment in its narrative where the first half was kind of full of all this violent chaos and vengeance and bloodshed. And during the second half of the track the beat changes and suddenly you get this very laid back track that's kind of putting all of that violence in the bigger picture, kind of globally. And also Bono's vocal contributions on this track were unexpected to see on something like a Kendrick album, but they worked. I have to say, they really did work. Then on the track Fear, Kendrick describes three instances of fear in life. One from the view of a child being warned sternly or probably being told off or maybe even threatened. One from the view of a teenager starting to get involved with gang culture and drug dealing. A brutal setting there. And then the final instance of fear is kind of the view of an adult now dealing with anxiety and self-confidence or a lack thereof. The progression 
of this track is really well executed in just the verses and how they cover all these different types of fear. And the storytelling on Duckworth was a fantastic way to end off the album, telling an entire story about Kendrick's father and the now founder of Top Dog Entertainment and, and how their paths crossed, uh, probably in not the most peaceful of ways, but it was a very good coverage of the topic of death and mortality and how quickly and unexpected life can be torn away from you when you least expect it. And just generally how crazy and brutal and unforgiving the world can be. Basically what I'm saying is there are plenty of likeable moments on Damn. However, that's not just what I have to say about Damn because what might be both Damn's greatest asset as well as greatest flaw is how scattered and ambiguous the album is and how disconnected each track kind of feels from one another. The opening and closing track on Dan both suggest that there is kind of a story, or maybe at least some kind of narrative. However, everything in between kind of jumps all over the map, and it becomes tricky to figure out what's meant to be what. How does this theme connect with this theme, and how does it all connect with the start and the finish of the album? It's all very, very weird. Who is the old blind lady at the start of the album? Why does he why does she kill the narrator? Why does everything reverse back to the start at the end of the album? Well, I'm almost sure that the answers aren't meant to be clear. I do think that there is kind of a couple of themes that you can grab onto and you can kind of use those to help interpret the album. For example, I think that there is a very strong religious theme on this album. A lot of the satire of materialism on tracks like Humble, Element, God and others could be caricatures of what we've done on earth that has drifted us away from God. If I could quote a certain line on this album, it's what happens on earth stays on earth. All the chaos, all the hurt, all the superficialness, all the materialism on earth will stay on earth once we cease to exist. Once we die, it won't be coming with us. And I think there's kind of a strong message being told there. Maybe the sudden, unexpected gunshot on blood is a reminder of how quickly life can be lost. Which can be a real bummer, especially if you had not been given the chance for salvation. Maybe the old lady is the devil that people are getting... Go Maybe she's Lucy! The insecurity, the materialism, the self-centeredness, the egotism. I hear theories all the time about which order you're meant to listen to the tracks in order to gain some kind of true understanding, but I really don't think that I should need some sort of external guide to experience the music. I should just be able to let the music on the album kind of speak for itself. And actually, listening to the album, I can enjoy most of the tracks, with the exception of some of the soppy love tracks, like maybe Love. And even if I like the almost drunken, dreary mood of Ya, that track almost gets too dreary for its own good, you know? At least a track like Pride had those guitar strums to keep it kind of moving. Boom, 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 boom. And whilst I'm talking about tracks that I wasn't exactly a fan of, I might as well say I prefer the concept of the track God as opposed to how it actually sounds. What is this album actually speaking for? Well, I don't know. A lot of things, I guess. As I said before, ambiguity is this album's greatest asset as well as its greatest flaw. I'm going to give this album an honest 7 out of 10. I don't want to force myself to give this album more acclaim than I feel it should get, but you know, the more I thought and listened, the more I realised this album is doing quite a lot of things right. However, its ambiguity and its purposeful lack of organisation is just a huge contrast from the album that preceded this thing to Pimp a Butterfly. And you know, in a way I appreciate that, but, but I do think that to some respect it is kind of the album's job to not leave the listener just totally hanging in the dark. Um, I do think that there are some moments where this album's intentions are completely unclear, and thus I can kind of be a little... off-put? I do like this album. Don't dismiss this album just because people are confused or people are just, oh, this, this thing is completely different to, pimp, to Pimp a Butterfly. I think it's still worth checking out, to be honest. I would say Kendrick has made better albums than this, but, you know, hey, this thing is, this thing is good.